Formula 1, returns to the United States for the round 17 of the 28th season of the US Grand Prix. However, with work was still being completed on the back straight and the hairpin corner before, which means that for the first time ever, the US Grand Prix will run on a shortened layout, which effectively just merges the first and third sectors together to create what is now one of the more technical tracks on the calendar. Despite the treacherous conditions in, key, in first practice, all the teams were able to gather as much data as they can about this new track with this mini chicane section there being added to merge the sectors together, creating what is now one of the shorter tracks on the calendar in both the distance and time. And Toyota wind eyeing up their chances all too much, with the track now being turned into a technical circuit, with the Toyota car still lacking a little bit of downforce, the Toyota team respecting maybe in a damage limitation from the race. However, McLaren were quite the opposite, and I think with the tight nature of the circuit, if they do something clever on the strategy that Carl Majority and Ray Harrington might be able to sneak a point or two from the race. And also Haas were struggling as well in all the sessions, ever since the Hungarian race where the BMW upgrades pretty much ruined the car, they're still yet to really get on top of them and with the technical circuit here, despite scoring points in all their previous home races, they're not too confident about keeping that result going this year. Now before we get into the qualifying report, following on board now from a lap from Josh Chero in, in fast qualifying Q1. And down the straight here, this first part of the lap here is all perfectly as it was before. Now uh, going into the first corner, heavy braking still for turn one, then the straight there in the race and qualifying is the only DRS straight available on the track. Because everything else is still normal so far. Now uh, we're going now through this section. This is until we get to the end of the S's, everything here is still all as it was so far, everything's still the old track. We're now coming up to the end of the S's here, midway through actually. There's a sharp left here through this little dividing section, which is a, it looks more awkward than what it is. You can really just kind of like straight line it if you wanted to. Now, as you could now into what would be the third sector of the lap normally on the full circuit, but being on this kind of like indie circuit, the sectors the, the, uh, where the start and end ends, because usually on the normal track, this would be sector three by now. As you can now into what is the final few coins out of the lap and coming under the bridge here under that Rolex sign. This is where sector three now starts for this for this lap. And I've been through the what well, is effectively the turn eight in Turkey but backwards. And then into the final few corners now the pit lane entry exit the pits is all still the same. Now coming now into the final corner. Everything goes perfectly fine here for Josh Cherry now with a run now up to the finish line. It says the lap time there one minute ten flat and that's not even on the fastest tyres so expect times to tumble throughout the rest of qualifying and also into the race. Just, yeah, this track would show the, the shortcomings of the Tarasso car, with both of them lining coming on the back row, with Kari in 20th and Pierre Gasly in 19th. Carmen Jordan would start 18th in the McLaren, and Mick Schumacher would bring to light the struggles of the Haas, only lining up 17th at their home Grand Prix. Johnny Van was disappointed to be out in Q1, and Lance Shaw would make it through just about into Q2, but couldn't get any higher than 15th on the grid. Hockenberg starts from 14th as the lead of the Renaults, and Rhea Harrington starts from just outside the points places from 13th, and is also the lead of the Renault powered cars on the grid. Giovinazzi starts from inside the points place, and the Salvas times from 12th, and Adrian Sutter would just miss the cut to get into Q3, starting from 11th. Scarverline starts from P10 in the Mercedes, especially Vettel starts from P9 in the lead of the Ferraris after a disappointing session in Q3. And Alonso was extremely disappointed to be starting only in 8th place and behind four of his championship rivals, one of which he showed, shared row 4 of the grid with, Robbie Kubica in the Williams. The other two drivers in the championship fight ahead of Alonso share row 3 of the grid, with Josh Cherry starting from 6th in the Williams and Hamilton starting from P5 in the Toyota. Charles Leclerc takes his best qualifying to date so far in Formula 1 starting from P4 in the Sauber, with Camille Kobayashi starting from a podium place in P3. This would leave the front row to be decided, unsurprisingly, by the Red Bull pairing, with Daniel Kvyat in second place and Max Verstappen taking his second career pole position. Hey guys, Taro here. Welcome back to the Uni1 career, this time round 17 for the US Grand Prix around this really short circuit, as you've already seen. And it's becoming somewhat of a technical nightmare, this track, with only one DRS straight. But then again, I'm not too big of a fan of DRS anyway, so in a way, I kind of like this track, only having one DRS zone. I'm sure the Red Bull pairing like it as well. Of course, it's been the home race for their Ford Cosy engine, backing out the front row. I imagine they're going to run away with it in the race with how much pace they were showing, about half a second quicker than Kobayashi in third. And again, nice paint shot here with the cars coming through the middle sector there. Fernando Alonso starting in P8. 
The Mercs don't really like technical tracks, it seems. It's back from Singapore now here as well. Also, what about the Haas? It's both of them starting from outside the points place is Shawling 15th, she means 17th. They only need a minor miracle to score points, but they've got the power of the home crowd behind them. Being the only American team on the grid, it's going to be a lot of eyes on them to improve their positions during the race. Now, looking back at us now, starting from P6, I mean, it's a pretty good qualifying, I have to say, for us. I mean, if you take out the Red Bulls, then it's still in, 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 in amongst the, uh, the mid pack. We've not lost out too much to everyone else. But Charles Leclerc did an, did an absolute madness, though. Starting from P4 in the Sauber, which hasn't got the most downforce in the world. It's really fast in a straight line. But either way now, coming to the five red light for the start of the US Grand Prix. Lights out, away you go after a very long hold that was. The two of the two Rebels going pre even start there into turn one. Boy, this is long straight now into turn one. There's a guy team up from Kimitz against Sabatano, one of the Toyota. We go to look now to the inside line, trying to come back at the inside line. She's three wide now with one of the most, one of the fries. We'll just hold it there up the inside line. That's a crucial move there that will keep in front there of Fernando Alonso. We've got a team at Kimitz trying to run muscles away past one of the Toyotas of Lewis Hamilton. And then coming through this hitch now, so everything else has pretty much been settled down. Everyone else now getting single file. You see, you see a few gaps starting to appear, but then again, everything just snakes back together once again. And now through this middle part out there, through that little joining section, there's no way that you can make a move past anyone else. Now we come now into what is normally the third section of the lap, but it's still the second section of this current lap for this current track design. And this track being being one minute ten in terms of lap time, it's going to be a pretty quick and Quick race, well, pretty much, probably is about the same time as what Austria is, because that's about a minute four out of time this game, and it's got more laps than what this has. Now, uh, going through the inverted Turkey Tail 8, I don't actually know what, how many coins are on this track, so probably not not very many, since they've been reduced somewhat, anyway. We're going to run something that's going to ring out a little bit wide, because in the dirty air of the Toyota in front of us, this Williams is designed to be a front running, running car, because, well, it is a front running car. And if it doesn't work well in the dirty air of other cars, we've got Kobe Ashley, he's actually done. Into P4, so he's actually lost the place to Charles Leclerc, who's actually now chasing down after Danny Kvyat. He's actually giving Kvyat, as it stands, a run for his money. I imagine Leclerc, I mean, he's going to Ferrari next year, and he's got a few podiums already in that cell over this season. He, I mean, he was leading a few races ago back at Russia, so imagine he's going to still want to try and make that. I mean, it's still not out of the question yet that he could win a race. I mean, there's still races left in the season, but honestly, I think Russia was probably the best chance that he had. And now we've got a team at Kubica. It's all over the back, though, of Kirby Ash. I mean, Kirby, he's not had the greatest season in the world. I mean, he's, he definitely picked it up in the second half of the season. But then again, Hamilton has three name, has three wins to his name, and Kirby Ash hasn't actually scored a podium yet in that Toyota, try, I don't think. So he's going to need to start picking up his results soon if he wants to keep that seat for next year. We know that there are rumours that Massachusetts is coming in. Now we get a hover on there over the curbing. Trying to put the power down there was not a good idea whatsoever. You can't put the power down on the curbing, but... I mean, we've got to go, we've got to, we need to get in front of Hamilton. I mean, we're all in front of Alonso. I mean, he's right behind me, as you can see behind. So as it sounds, we're still gaining points on the championship on him. And coming into this race, I think we're about 20 or so points behind him. So we, we crucially, we do need to beat him in bare minimum. And then we need to beat Hamilton as well, because he's in the championship fight as well. And Kubitz uh, kind of still is. And then you've got Danny Kubitz in second place. Well, we definitely need to beat him if we can. But the Rebels are already pulling away, along with Charlotte Clay. He's not letting them get out of sight. First thing let's say this is he's doing an absolute madness so far as we can actually go past with through the first sector, so there's some really good pace there through that sector. I mean, yeah, the first sector is basically a straight line, so of course we're gonna be doing good through there. And again, along with the sectors, which are the fastest things in straight lines, so I imagine they probably do have the better engine over the BMW Williams. And then that Merc AMG engine behind is not the best in the world for the season, so that's crucial for us anyway. Now then, moving a bit further on, looking a bit further back at a and literally every other car in the race who's stuck up here behind Gio. You can see the gap everyone else in front is pulling. So Gio, he may start from inside the points places, but he's not showing the best race pace in the world. But again, that sound is so fast in a straight line that even Valentino with DRS. Actually, I mean, look, let's fill up the mirrors. There. Actually, actually the, 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 the red wing there on the inside line. He's actually got to make a move there. Is that, is that, which Ferrari is that? He's actually, the Adrian Siddle there, he just breezed past Pascal Verline. So maybe the Ferrari's running a little bit low drag as well. And they're taking some notes from what Salbo are doing back at Russia. And pretty much just shows that the AMG engine is not the greatest. That is a Ferrari, which is not the greatest engine in the world either. I mean, it's no slouch, but it's not the greatest. Just powered past Pascal Verline. And now then, it's going to be Sutter's turn now to try and make a move past Giovinazzi. Because these two were teammates last season in in the Salbo car. I mean, they, they could have ended up doing Salbo's last races because they didn't know if they were going to make it onto the grid for this because they completely ran out of money. That's when Alfa Romeo stepped in and pretty much saved them and they've now made it into their own team. 
Uh, this could be an, end up being a fight. We could end up seeing it. Seems well, oh, Alpha Romeo versus Ferrari. So anyway, Alpha can if they can get a good car, I mean, with the, the lay by of the team, they're probably going to get the car that Sam would have raced for next year. And as he goes to the inside line, the going to try to hold it out all the way around the outside line. That'd be a brave move. That like Gia is just able to hold him off. I mean, that would have been a brilliant move, though, honestly. If Sutter could have done that, pretty much been watching the IndyCar races and watching what Pado Award did. Uh, coming up now, into turn one, is not going to try to make a move up the inside line. And I think this, is stay, this pretty much stays in the status quo. That's because the virtual safety car's out. And we're also down to 19 runners, so someone's blown up. I didn't see who that was. I didn't see any car down in front, so it must have been someone behind Gio and Sutter, so someone down towards the lower end of the grid, so to compare the misery. That was Pierre Gasly. He's not in 19th place. That pretty much not made any difference to his weekend, really, because even on a short track like this, it's kind of it's kind of like like a hungry style track. He wasn't going to be getting points anyway. And then back now onto racing speed, and, he, and we run out of matches because he went back to racing speed mid corner. And trying to put the power down mid corner, he was met with a wall of understeer. I mean, Williams, so you kind of get a wall of understeer anyway. So he's through uh, some corners. The slow speed corners are definitely not what his Williams like. He's never really liked the slow corners. Fast corners like this, though, is what he does like. If we can keep the car planted, so we've got the high speed down for us, it's just the low speed corners that the car just doesn't work. As we come now into the uh, fight, now looking back at that fight of the Geo Sutto fight once again, and Geo is still catching from me, imagine that's no surprise, he had a virtual safety car getting into the sex head of the lap where it's all, just, it's all just corners really. This this track is all just corners now, with the shortened layout. And then you're going to have DRS here, because then you have VSX, so we get DRS back once again. Now, because I know all the other flags, that's so we can't make the new move past there, but there's his car pulled off. Actually, so he's going to go for it though, too. This is like a breeze past Gio, so the uh, yellow flags must have ended pretty soon. I mean, I imagine. I don't really see why they wouldn't have. Because you get, you get past the car, then you go back to Green Flag Racing. And I can see how much already it's sort of pulling away from Giovinazzi. I mean, you know that the, the, uh, the Sauber isn't the, the most downforce heavy car in the world, but it's Charles Leclerc's in the potent places, so. He's really just showing what that car is actually capable of, and Soto's just pulling away now. Maybe about a second, second half already, and what's that, half a lap? Now then, looking back to us, running out wide once again, over that curve, he's trying to put the pad on that, that corner is really not agreeing with us. He was like, I think he's in Mexico through the stadium sector, that corner there just doesn't agree with me in that either, so... I think we need to work on that, I'm running out a bit wide because the tyres are starting to go off, so thankfully we, we don't get a track limits war or anything, I mean... This, there isn't really much of a track to have limits on. Because it's just so short. And we're six tenths down on our best lap. So, uh, yeah, so the tyre does go now. It is lap seven. I mean, even on this shortened track, this, the tyre wear is still pretty noticeable because there's a lot of high speed corners. So there is still a lot of going through the tyres. I mean, trying to have a look there on Hamilton. I mean, we could have got around the corner, but Hamilton on the racing line. And just put the power down. Because even that tyre, even though it lacks downforce, it's still got some pretty good traction in it. I mean, the pair with their three the first half, I mean, like I said before, you, sector one is a straight line. It doesn't matter if your tyres are going off, you can still go in a straight line perfectly fine. And I'm running out wide all over the place there, Yeah, it's, it's not a fun time being stuck in this dirty and I've had to have to go defensive to a lot of them. I'm going to try and go for a pop round the outside line, but he's going to move aggressively in front of him. Because he's not going to take any rest, I don't know what I was going to do. I mean, he, of course he doesn't want to be behind us, but us being directly in front of him, and him still being over 20 points clear of us in the championship, I'm pretty sure something like, something like that anyway. He's not going to take a risk that he doesn't need to, and then you've got Vettel behind him who's not really in the championship fight anymore. Uh, I think he's mathematically still in it, but realistically, he's going to need some of his 2017 form if he's going to want to, wants to get the championship. And moving further now to lap 10. And things are still exactly the same as they were a few laps ago. We're still in P7. We're still having nightmares around that corner, actually, into P6. So one of the front-running cars, the front has come into the pits. But it's not Hamilton, it's not Kubica. And it's not Kobayashi, because Kobayashi is actually pulling away a bit now from Kubica, so maybe Kubica is used up his tyres, just trying to follow behind in the early laps. And now Hamilton, he might actually get a run here, depending on Kobayashi's... Yeah, actually, Kobayashi yeah, is far enough in front of Kubica, so Kubica doesn't have DRS. Now they're coming up this straight now into turn one, he's going to pull to the inside line, he's going to be side by side now. And he actually runs out a little bit wide, the Hamilton gets a little bit of the race, he still makes the apex, so... Obviously Kubica are out wide, now Kubica is going to swap him now, just in front of us. And uh, really... This is the point where Kibitza honestly needs to let us through as well, because uh, he's not really in the championship fight anymore, so it's us really going for the drivers, it's us really in Alonso. I mean, Hamilton, Kvyat, I mean, Kvyat really actually crashed last race, pretty much took himself out of the championship fight, so pretty much it's just me, uh, me, Alonso, and Hamilton really are the ones going for it. They were all in the back, almost crashing into the back of Robbie Kibitza, we've got so much more good speed on the pole. That's the rear. 
there's no really any way coming out. I mean, you, there is places coming into this corner here. You can overtake if you're close enough to the car in front. But like I say, with our Williams being a front running car, you can't really stick all too close to the car in front. I was going to floor it out through this corner. And this is where we're getting back. So, so uh, yeah, our teammates' tyres really are going off the cliff now, getting round to the back of him. And now Hamilton. Actually, they're coming now into the pit, so out is going to jump out. These other me bits that are both carrying on for another lap, at least, anyway. Is anyone else here coming with Hamilton? It's like, is that shoulder clear up in front? It looks like a dark red car. I'm pretty sure that's Leclerc's coming as well. And they're going to be onto a set now of the super soft tyres. This is, despite the high tyre wear, this is still a one stop race. I mean, I think it probably would have been a one stop anyway on the, the full length track. And it just depends on where they're going to come out. Probably in dead last place. You don't really get a lot of field spread with a race like this where Giovinazzi is just training every single car in the race. Those two now have pretty much been unleashed now to try and push and along with that other car that stopped earlier on as well. Now um, still stuck up behind Kubis, so didn't manage to get past him on this lap so far. And Kubis has still been the lead driver. He's going to get lead preference of if, of if he wants to pit next. So unless I just manage to get past him right now, I'm going to have to stay up for at least another lap. If Kubis doesn't pit though on this lap, I'm coming in. See, I confirmed to the pit crew that I'm boxing, and that's just saying that if Kibitza, I'm doing the opposite to Kibitza, honestly. There's no point of double stacking because we're still ahead of Alonso anyway, by about half a second. But Alonso, he's he's the lead man, he can still do whatever he wants. And Kibitza, he's going to come into the pits. Really, Kibitza, he could have just stayed out for another lap. Uh, has anyone else coming behind you? Yeah, Alonso's in, and Vettel's in as well. So the other two championship contenders that are behind me have all come in now, and I've been slightly screwed over here. Going on, well, I'm in, I'm in clean air, so I have to give everything these tyres have got left, which, as you've already seen, isn't exactly a lot. But Kibitza comes out crucially there in front of Alonso, and actually pulled a little bit of a gather, so good start from the Williams boys, and actually you've got Kobayashi coming in then as well, so so tyres that actually gave Kobayashi second pit, and that's actually maybe been why, because Hamilton's now in front of Kobayashi, and of course Kamu's not in the championship fight, so it makes sense for those two cars to swap round. And now back onto us. We're currently in P2. We were behind Verstappen, but Max Verstappen has already made his pit stop. He's on an absolutely he's on another planet in this race. He's already he's already a pit stop ahead of me in 13 laps of this shortened track. And the lap time is a minute ten. The pit lane is probably about 20-ish or so seconds, so. I've been losing over a second lap to his look, he's just completely gone! That rebels is sticking to this track like glue! I mean, this track even probably in the normal air, with the back straight probably been what would have killed them, but since there is no real straight on this track, the rear air would deflect the good air and chassis off that Red Bull car. Now then, I gave it everything those tyres had left, and we've got the other Ferrari of Adrian Sutter coming in behind as well, so it looks like me and Sutter, uh, either by, uh, well, for me it wasn't by choice to know about Sutter, but we've both gone long distance, so we're going to have fresher tyres now to the end of the race, so this is where the advantage will swing back in our favour, although it is only a lap or two fresher, depending on who you're comparing us to against, but uh, your fresher tyres is always a good thing to have. You never know, if those tyres are front goes clear, actually we've got Alonso trying to get around the outside line of us, so Alonso, he had a pretty good outlap, and we just managed to get keep it from him, they're going to keep it side by side here, through the SSA, you're going to try to be running outside line, even on cold tyres as well. Alonso, he backs out of the mood, doesn't force the issue. I mean, that was probably, probably the one opportunity that he actually had. But now then, onto lap 15, we're still stuck up right behind Kibitza. I mean, it's been the story of, of this race right here, but he's stuck right up behind the car in front of you. But now then, we've got the DRS with him, so does Kibitza on the uh, Toyota frame, which um, is probably Kobayashi since Hamilton got past him earlier on. And Sam Osana now coming out into first corner. Actually, it's Hamilton! He's actually dropped back and he's going side by side, actually a little bit wheel banging there with Kibitza, and you're going to force out Robert. But somewhere, Hamilton's been re overtaken by by Kamui, and the Kamui's just disappearing off into the road, and all over the back of Kamui's are almost crashing into the back of him, you have to back out, there's no way I'm going side by side, especially with my teammate. Maybe if it was someone else, I may have thought about it, but obviously teammate, we're in the shortest battle with Red Bull and with Mercedes, that's not question for your teammate. But now, what's happened though? Why is Kobayashi now back in front of Hamilton? He looks like, you know, he's really shorting on his tyres, he's, he's causing a bit of a Giovinazzi train now. Then you've obviously got Kubitz and me, Alonso, then Seb Vettel behind. And then behind him, he's got Adrian Sutter as well. So if things carry on like this, and he may not be in the fries, maybe end up getting quite interested in this battle. And through this part of the last thing we were, we have to try and stick close here to Vito. We have to live there for them. We'll almost break check ourselves, really, if we don't plow into the back of, of Kibitza. 
Thank you, mister. Yes, yeah, so good running out of the second last corner, now into the final corner here. This time around, surely Rob has got to make the move this time. I don't know if he's got some kind of car issue out him, maybe it's just some tyre issues or something. It's not the first time we've seen Toyotas have tyre issues on the harder compounds. And now they're going to pull to the inside line now. Oh, that's Toyota. He's going to make the move this time. Hamilton breaks early as well. And just gets caught in the back of Kubica there, getting very, very cheeky there with Hamilton. Let me try and get a side now. And we're also going to blast straight past the Toyota. Something is, must be wrong with those tyres. I mean, we saw it with the Leclerc and back at Russia, but then again, that's because he absolutely destroyed his tyres with a massive lockup. Unless Hamilton's made some kind of mistake or something like that. I don't know if he's got some, made some kind of slow puncture or something. Imagine if he did, the, the team would have pit him, so maybe his tyres are just graining or something. So maybe that Toyota is not quite working. Well, it's clearly not working on those tyres anyway. Now then, looking back up front, to the leader, Matt Stafford is now putting, coming out to lap the midfield cars. I mean, he makes a bit of contact there with the McLaren, but crucial for him is that it doesn't get any damage and Verstappen, if he carries on like this, he's going to be on course for his first ever career win. It's been a long time coming, I mean he's been here since 2014, he did what he did the, the odd race with Caterham, and he's been in 2015 is when his first season actually started. Now he's actually coming up now to lap Giovinazzi, who's dropped, dropped really far back now, he's got one of the Toros, of course the Toros is going to get jumped straight out of the way, that's, of course that's Nico Kari as well, the sole remaining Toro in the race. And he goes from Stafford to against Derek well since he was behind him at the detection point. And Giovinazzi there with that straight line speed, just going to blast straight past Nico Kari. Even though Gio doesn't have the best pace overall around the lap. Like I said before, you can't, if you can't fasten the straight line, you can't fasten the straight line. And the Taurus so Honda isn't fasten the straight line. And now then, on to lap 19, we're still all over the, the back here of Robbie Kubitsa. Now, if we put up our fastest lap, well, our personal best lap of the race anyway. Now, coming into turn one, we try to make a move on the back. Kubitsa going to have a load to the inside line, just go for a die there, just trying to put him off with Kubitsa. He's been here for longer, he's been here since 2008, although not consistently throughout the years, but he could have won the 2008 Championship, so you're not going to put him off with a die to the inside like that. He's going to green through the first sector once again, but just about, though, pretty much they connect to what our best time is through the first sector. And we've dropped Alonso by quite a way. So, of course, he's got past Hamilton again, so has yeah, the Ferrari, I'd imagine, as well. But Alonso, it's like his pace isn't all too spectacular either. I mean, the yeah, Mercedes don't work really, don't really work around slow corners anyway, so that's not really all too surprising, like the back of Singapore, where they were just absolutely nowhere. And this being kind of like a Singapore style track, just without the walls, so nothing really that you can do. But P6, in a car, if, if you're having a bad race and you're in P6, then it's not. Really, all too bad, really, is it? Now, we're all the back here of Kubica trying to look here around the outside line where the race line goes. Now, the inside line, we're almost basically, we're basically pushing Kubica through the corners here. We've got so much more good speed on him. And Kubica, you know, we know he doesn't really like team orders, he's not going to let us through willingly. Uh, it's all about that. Can we get a run here on the back of our teammate? I mean, we're going to be in the direct this time. We've got much, much better run this time because it's going to breeze past him now. Now, it's one, we're going to leave space, space there around the outside line. Now we're going to go a bit wide, Kubica actually going to go for a switch right line, trying to get on the inside line, we've put the power down there on the curbing. No, 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 we've actually pulled away now from Kubica, and now, can we chase down it out after Kobayashi? We're going to green through the first sector, we've got eight laps of the race to do it. And although eight laps is basically about nine or ten minutes to get warning there for track limits, I mean, we've got a little bit of a wiggle, so... Yeah, it's, it's, thankfully that a warning is all we got. Now being a bit further on, the, looking a bit further down the order, the Renault and Haas battle, I, I'm pretty sure they're out of the point, I mean, they've got a Gia right behind them. That pretty much sells it. They're out of the points here. And the Renaults, they really haven't worked around this track either. I mean, they've been making good progress throughout the season, but this track just really didn't seem to be working for the whole too much. Neither of the houses, they haven't really worked in the second half of the season just at all, really. But now they've got Schumacher, who's the leader of the houses. He's overtook his teammate Sean at some point, so his team battle's still going to go to Shumi as it stands. And he's got DRS though on the back here. Oh, the Renault, I didn't actually see which one of the Renaults this is. I think it might be Hawkenberg. Well, I can't really tell. He's going to make a move trying to go around the outer line. He's going to be late breaking here from the Renault. Bit of a lockup though. From the Renault, he's going to try and stick it there around the outside line. Schumacher there with a good run. It is indeed Hawkenberg. Shimi with the racing line just breezes past Hawkenberg there. Puts the power down. A nice authoritative move there from Mick Schumacher. And showing even when you're having a pretty terrible race, he's still got some. Excellent racecraft in him. He's definitely calling leaps and bounds since his first since his first season halfway th halfway through the 2017 season. Uh, moving a bit further on, looking now at the Selber here of Charles Leclerc. Is this or is this Shivan actually? No, it's in the it's Charles Leclerc. He's actually coming up to lap cars now. I think this is the first time in at least in Formula One anyway that Charles Leclerc is actually coming up to lap other cars, and he's doing this in what is the sixth best car. He's coming up now to lap the uh, McLaren of. Carmen Jorda, I think, anyway, I'm not too sure, you can see the, either her or Rhea Arianta, that's two McLaren's anyway. 
and you've got the Sorry Manu Toro of uh, Nika Curry and Jordan. He did Jordan, I guess, out of the way nice and easily. It's going to be Nika Curry. I mean, if Shaw Leclerc can do things like this in the Salva Alfa Romeo, if Ferrari come with an even half decent car next year, then Shaw Leclerc is going to be right in the title fight. I mean, it might be a bit like 2012, but the uh, the car is absolutely abysmal. But Alonso was, was, what, three points shy of winning the title in it? I mean, if he didn't get, didn't get crashed into at Spa and uh, Japan, we'd have easily won that championship that year. So Leclerc, the next car for him to lap now is actually his teammate Giovinazzi. That might get a bit frosty between them two. Now moving on to the end of lap 27, now star of lap 28. We've been catching Kobayashi, but we've not been catching by enough. We, we, we've closed the gap down to three and a half seconds and we've really dropped Kibitsa, so Twist's pace, pretty much like Hamilton and Alonso's, hasn't been great. He's already, what, he's seven seconds behind us, but he's still in P5, so it's still going to be a good hold of points for Kibitsa, and it's still going to be more points than what the Mercs will get, because we're ahead of both of them, and that's great for us the championship, but the Red Bull, though, with the staff and in Kvyat up in front, actually, no, wait. Kvyat's in third, so Leclerc's in second. So if Vassal in first, where's Danny Kvyat gone? Has he retired or something? I, I I don't actually know if we haven't seen it, if he has. But Max Stappen now, he's only got a few more corners to go. I imagine he's going to be the most tense corner in the last. I can't imagine what Horner's foot jiggling is like on the pit wall right now. Now then, coming up to the final corner. He could have won in Hungary, and now Max Stappen coming up to the line. He does win his first ever Grand Prix here on the US short circuit. Yes, yes. Unbelievable, Max. Unbelievable. Max Verstappen, you are a race winner. Fantastic. What a great debut. What a debut. Fantastic. Great, great job. Thank you very much, Christian. And I couldn't agree more there with Christine Horner. That was a great debut win. Well, Max Stappen, of course, he wasn't a win on debut, it's debut because it's his first ever win. And in front of the home crowd for Ford Cosworth as well, that's going to be a really good press release for them at the end of this race. Well, Max Stappen, a dominant, dominant victory. Now you can see how happy Christine Horner is with his win. I mean, Red Bull, I mean, this is his first win. I mean, Re uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely his first win, but I think that's only Red Bull's fourth win of the season as well, so finally Verstappen. It's been, it's been a long, long time coming for him, but a really, really well deserved when He could have won back at Hungary. Honestly, he should have won at Hungary. Just Alonso, with his wizardry, managed to get past him somewhere. Nice stroll. Understandably disappointed to be in P16 in the uh, the home race there for the Haas team. And the podium celebration now. Look at Max Stappen. He's absolutely elated. I mean, you can't blame him either. He's been a little, such a long time coming. He's been at Red Bull for so long now and finally you can see that how much this first win means to him, this first breakthrough victory and I'm sure it's going to be first of many 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 victories to come for myself and of course he got especially a shout out to Charles Leclerc in second place as well and Kobe actually riding off the podium so those two drivers as well with great results when it matters most for them taking a look at the end results the Max Verstappen and the victory 23 seconds clear of Charles Leclerc. That is about a quarter of a lap he was ahead of Charles Leclerc. And he ran a short in track as well. He is so dominant for Max Staffan in this race. And you've got KB Ashley runs off the podium in third. We're in fourth with our teammate Kibitza in P5 and Hamilton gets back into P6 so something was working for him again at the end. With Alonso in seventh and Seb Vettel he played with Daniel Kvyat down in P9. And I will say now I know he says Daniel Kvyat, not Daniel Kvyat, but in the game files, I couldn't find I couldn't find Daniel to change it, so that's going to be as it is. I, like I said, I couldn't find where to change it. And so, though, rounds off the top ten in the Ferrari of Verne 11, that Harry Antu just sneaks a point for McLaren in 12. Verne would just miss out on points in 13th, with Shumi in 14th, and then you're the Renault of Hulkenberg in P15. Scholl then in the 16th place with Gio down in 17th in the end with Kari in 18th and Jordan last of the finishes and there were all of the cars there were lapped down with Gasly the only in retirement from the Grand Prix. Moving on to the point standings and with beating Alonso in the race we go his championship lead now back under to a race win worth the points now down to 17 points now with Lewis Hamilton in P3 on, f on 146 and he's 41 off now so Alonso it's like it's just going to be, it's, the more it goes on, the more it looks like it's just going to be me and him for the championship. This with only two races left to go. Actually, it is only me and him for the championship now, because there's only 40 points left on offer. So it's me versus Alonso now for the title. And you've got Hamilton in P3 with Kvyat in fourth. 
then Kibitza in P5 with Sebastian Vettel in 6th and Verstappen with that first win gets up now into 7th ahead of Pascal Verline. Charles Leclerc now gets up into 9th place to 78 with Kobayashi in 10th also also but by a better result with Leclerc in front and that drops Sutter now down into 11th place to 73 with Hulkenberg riding off the top 12 and 57 for Renault. Verne's in 30th of 45, one point ahead of McShumi on 44, and his teammate Lance Stroll is on 35, with Ricardo still in 16th on 16, with Harry Anto in 17th place now on 5 points, gets finally ahead on merit of Pierre Gasly, with Giovinazzi 19th on 2, with Matsuchita and Joyner rounding off the point scorers, leaving Sainz and Kari as the only two drivers on 0 points. Finally now moving on. Two of the point standings for the constructors, and Williams now will retake the lead of the constructors once again now by eight points from Mercedes. And you have Red Bull in third now, 45 points off, and they're still in the uh, constructors' fight at least anyway, because you get 35 points for a one-two. There's still 70 points on offer, so it's still a three-way fight as things stand in the constructors. With Toyota looking ever set now in P4. Still with a great haul of points for them. Yeah, only their second season back in Formula 1. They've got Ferrari in P5 on 192. It's Alfa Romeo Sauber now looking pretty set. Now in 6th place, 30 points clear now of Renault. With Haas in 8th. And they're dropping off still a little bit, although near the team really scored. Although the Renault, they've got more chance of scoring points in the future races than what Haas have going off current standings. And you've got McLaren now in 9th place on 6 points now, 2 points clear of Torosso, who are at the bottom of the standings in 10th. So going to a very few driver of the day with the poll link that will be in the video description of this video. You'll also check out the wiki here for this season, previous seasons, all the teams, all the drivers as well. Leave a like if you enjoyed this race and leave a comment down below as well. Subscribe if you do and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Don't do, uh, give me a follow on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Maybe link down below in the description, along with the uh, the uh, livery mods that I use. So the BMW livery on the Williams, the BWT livery on the Toyota, and the the Alfa Romeo Sauber livery. They'll be linked down in the description. If you want to, if you got this game on PC and you you uh, want to give them a download and use them yourself, then they'll be down there. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.